I'm Mark Dresner, and this is Forward Focus, a special interview series featuring experts and leaders at the forefront of innovation. Forward Focus is brought to you by the Front End of Innovation Conference, FEI, the world leader in advancing innovation now entering its 15th year. Joining us today is Dr. Dorothy Leonard. She's the William J. Abernathy Professor of Business Administration Emerita at Harvard Business School. She's also the co-author of Deep Smarts, How to Cultivate and Transfer Enduring Business Wisdom. Dorothy, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. The title of the book you've co-authored with Dr. Walter Swap is Deep Smarts. Mm -hmm. What are Deep Smarts and how do they relate to innovation? Deep Smarts, I'll give you the short definition. Mm -hmm. uh, Deep Smarts are business critical, experience-based knowledge. That's what deep smarts are. So that means that uh, people who are deeply smart have some of the most important knowledge in their heads for our businesses, for our organizations. Mm. And the, some of the characteristics of people with deep smarts are that they are uh, known for good judgment mm. uh, in cases where there's uh, gray areas, something's not black or white, have to make decisions. They have, and perhaps this is even more important, they have a system perspective. That is, someone who is deeply smart can anticipate what implications a decision might have, what ramifications down the way, either be in a process or in an organization or whatever system that they are embedded in. And uh, they have uh, the ability to recognized patterns. They've been there before, they've seen this, done that, mm. and therefore they can make decisions fairly rapidly. There are downsides to that, of course, and we could talk about that. Uh, but they are the go-to people in organizations. Okay, and so they're basically deep smarts then, while experience obviously plays a, an important role here, are about more than tenure, right? Yeah. Um, but the baby boomers are gonna be retiring soon. Uh, possibly in large numbers en masse. What are the implications then for organizations? Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one because um, there's what some organizations call the silver tsunami. Mm. <laughs> People leaving like uh, out the door all the time. In fact, one of the clients of, uh, of the organization that I advise found that when he looked at his current client, his current uh, population of engineers and scientists and very skillful people, mm. 27,000 years of experience could walk out the door that year. Wow. I mean, it was really quite startling. And uh, a lot of times companies are not totally prepared for this. They really haven't thought ahead to what's going to happen when these people leave, when they <laughs> go play golf or whatever they're going to do. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, Essentially, what you're saying, these deep smarts, this is, this is, this is you know, organizational knowledge and wisdom that, the organi that will be departing. The organization does not, will not be retaining this, right? That's, the, that's yeah. a huge issue here, right? How do organizations know which deep smarts they need to retain? Uh, how, how can managers identify the crucial ones? Yeah. Well, when uh, we first started looking at this issue, I think we, we thought that would be difficult, and sometimes it is. If mm -hmm. companies exist in a lot of silos, they may not know where their experts are. But generally speaking, we found that people know who the go-to people are. Mm. They know that there are certain people who are always going to be asked the questions who are absolutely critical uh, to innovation, but not always. Sometimes there are people low in the organization who haven't been uh, haven't come to light uh, who also have deep smarts. But you're right, it's, n it's not just experience. It's uh, experience in skills, know-how, not, not how to operate some particular machine that may or may not go out of uh, style or out of use, but people who have these uh, skills and abilities that have been honed over years of experience. And those people are generally known to their colleagues because they're the go-to people. They're the people who are always in demand. They're mm. the people whose time is most precious because people are counting on them uh, for the answers and, and the diagnostics 
deeply smart people usually have uh, an ability to diagnose problems and to foresee problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. What are three things that someone can do to get the necessary processes in place for knowledge transfer and retention? One example of how loss of experience can affect innovation is uh, in the story about Boeing and the development of the Dreamliner. Mm. In about uh, 2004, when Boeing decided they were going to create this revolutionary airliner, they looked around and they realized that about half of their very senior engineers could, in fact, retire in the next couple of years. So they kind of had a window of opportunity. And if they didn't take advantage of it, um, though that, all that expertise could walk out the door. Mm. And it's not that there weren't people who were coming along behind these senior engineers, but these were engineers who had been through the process so many times and over such uh, a number of years that to lose them would really slow things down. So they took advantage of the fact that these people hadn't retired yet. And that's an example of how uh, losing deep smarts can really affect your innovative capability. Mm, mm, mm. You also had another story you told me earlier about 3M. Oh, Could you yeah. give us an example from them? Yeah. I think we all know that there are companies around that have managed to survive for hundreds of years. Um, 3M is an example. 3M's been around for over a hundred years and they, they know more about adhesives and about um, different kinds of microstructures and uh, all of the things that we associate with uh, 3M. And they've cultivated that knowledge over years so that product after product after product comes out of those um, technological platforms that they have developed. And the people who understand those uh, underlying technologies are extremely valuable mm. to 3M. Without them, 3M would not be able to continuously produce all of those products. So, uh, and it's not just the uh, engineers and scientists, of course, who have deep smarts. We also have examples of deep smarts in, in sales and deep smarts in marketing and in finance. Um, but the technological deep smarts often enable companies such as 3M to continuously innovate. Essentially, understanding what that knowledge is, retaining that knowledge, is the real trick then and the real challenge for organizations particularly as a lot of it is going to be walking out the door right. in these deeply smart people. How can someone get the necessary processes or approach or, or foundation in place to, uh, to, to, for, for the knowledge transfer and for retention? How, mm -hmm. how do we go about doing that? Yeah. How do we get started? First of all, you have to raise awareness because not everyone's aware that, in fact, a lot of critical knowledge is in people's heads mm. and that uh, there is this threat that it could disappear if it's not transferred. So once you're aware of that as an issue, then you have to think about, okay, who are these people who have this critical knowledge? Mm -hmm. Can I identify them? And there, there are a number of ways of identifying them that we, we talk about in uh, the books that we've written. Uh, but we find that a lot of times people do know who the go-to people are. So once you know who they are, then you have another question. How much of the knowledge that they have has been documented? Mm -hmm. Has it been written down? Has it been uh, given in presentations? And the fact of the matter is that no matter how much has been written down, there's always that residue, and sometimes it's the most important part, of knowledge that's still in their heads. Mm. They've never articulated. So what we think about is, how much time do you have to transfer knowledge? That's one really critical issue. Is, um, is a person leaving in, in hours, days, months, mm. years? Secondly, how much of that knowledge is tacit? And by tacit, I mean undocumented, maybe never articulated. Mm. You know, in, um, in World War II, there were people called plane spotters. And what they did was, they would listen to the planes uh, coming overhead and they had to determine, are these people coming to bomb us or are these our own planes mm. coming back? And it's the kind of thing you can't tell someone. They had to learn it. They had to listen to each other. And, and, and if you were teaching me, you'd have to say, no, you know, you were wrong or you were right. There, so there are a lot of 
uh, there's a lot of art and um, unarticulated knowledge that people have that they've never been even asked to articulate. Mm -hmm. So first you have to figure out who it has it, how much of it has been documented, and then you have to set up a process, and uh, a process for uh, the articulation, and it's a, it's a push-pull process. Uh, the experts have to, to put the knowledge out there, push it out, and the learners have to pull it. The, the successors, the recipients have to pull it. And there are skills involved in both of those. Some experts are not very good at, mm -hmm. at teaching, at mentoring, uh, and they need to learn how to do it more effectively. And not all of us are great at, at learning, at pulling knowledge from other people. So there is a process that can be structured that's an apprenticeship if they have time enough. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there are other techniques that can be used uh, when you don't have time enough for an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, well, you've given us quite a bit to think about, and I think this would, should be highly useful for organizations that haven't given it any thought really need to start doing so, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Dorothy. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And that concludes this episode of Forward Focus. If you'd like to learn more about the topics that we've covered today, um, pick up a copy of Deep Smarts, but I would also recommend that you can get a copy of another text that was also co-authored by Dr. Leonard and by Dr. Walter Swap, and that is Critical Knowledge Transfer, which obviously is very important based on our conversation today. So I'd urge you to, to pick up copies of those books. Um, should be very instructive and helpful in moving forward for you. And for more about FEI, the Front End of Innovation Conference, please visit us online at frontendofinnovation.com. Until next time, I'm Mark Dresner. Thanks for tuning in.